Welcome to my bed at home. This is my ever-changing static view. Purple wall. Beatles and Audrey Hepburn posters. A chest of drawers stacked with books. The clothes error present. Error present with or without washing. No error. Note the changing washing and dressing gown selection. Also, the addition or not of brambles, the large brown corduroy dog and a white tiger. Occasionally, also my feet in pink slipper boots with white hearts and a real rescue dog. Small, white with black dots, Harper Lee, HL, literary dog ball, and a mound of me in bed. This is my world. I spend a lot of time horizontal. Sometimes I have weight in me, or wobble, or heart beat, beat, beat slow, quick, quick. Is that a waltz or a tango? And sometimes I do audio books instead of radio. This is me turning on my radio. But it has to be a shit audio book because otherwise I'm on tenter hooks, don't sleep and heart tangos, or miss fundamental bits of the story. Exciting, blank. Set up, blank. The killer was, blank. This bit you need to know to make sense of the next four billion chapters, blank. All that change and boom boom heart and partial stories means I find my solace here. Welcome to a rough guide to ceilings from my bed at home. I type using dictation when I'm knackered. It has interesting consequences. This photo is apparently showing Brian Boyle is 20. It's a mega posh golden ornate ceiling from my travels in Rome. I thought I'd start off with a slideshow of some posh ceilings I've seen. These are in the Vatican in Rome. They are intricate, the golden glow arched on a curve. You queue up for longer than you're inside, and by the time you enter, you're exhausted, hot and irritable. There are many of these type of people in these photos. You then go down 12 million miles of corridors to find the Egyptian exhibition is closed, and that's the only reason your sister came, so now she cries, and you add miserable to the list of fields. You have neck ache because all 12 million miles of corridors have the most incredible paintings, but you don't really take them in because you're dashing towards the Sistine Chapel for the most incredible ceiling painting of them all. Where you are bunched in, yelled at and can't take photos. So here's a very blurry image of my ticket with the famous bit where God's in a cloud touching fingers with a muscly, naked man with his willy out. I'll tell you where you are allowed to take photos. You don't have to queue and which has some top quality ceilings. My house. Well, you were allowed, but currently I'm in tier four, so sorry, not right now. And before tier four, stretching right back to the halcyon days of March 2020, we closed our borders. It wasn't that hard. Just said no, firmly with compassion, kindness and care. See, it's easy. Oh, the rage. I'll come back to that later, no doubt. People stayed out. I stayed in. I've seen an awful lot of my ceiling. Luckily, whoever lived in the house before us didn't believe in wallpaper on walls, but did believe in wallpaper on ceilings. This is the kitchen. Like smeared ice cream ripples with a hint of calla lily. A personal favorite. This is the living room, embossed hearts and flowers, repeating patterns, segments multiplying in sequence. There's also a sweep down to HL who can't bear to hold my gaze, she's so mortified by my ceiling addiction. Hey, <laughs> welcome back. We're in the room with the errors, where we began and where I've stayed throughout. I'm the mound under the duvet and HL is at the end of the bed. We swoop together so you get the full-on ceiling experience. It's a corker. Via the Louvre wardrobe doors to your right and the purple monkey, we reach a tessellation of diamonds. The centre of each is the inner dotty bit of a sunflower. There was once a flappy dangle flap top left. 
now stuck on, but replaced with wallpaper paste seepage. Seepage. Cracking word, that is. This is an invitation to stare at my ceiling. Sounds like an absolute riot. I'm not quite sure I can stand 100% by that statement, but, well, it's summit, isn't it? And it's about the only thing left untapped in this plague age. So many games to play. My brain likes patterns and repetitions, likes roots and loops, likes where they lead. There's counting, but I can never work this out. My blurry index finger is taking you horizontally along the line of diamonds. So if I count left to right and multiply it by top to bottom, does that give me the right amount? Does that take into account the row directly above or does it miss it out? Do I have to double the total? If I turn my head to the side and make them squares, I don't think I have to double anything, but hey, I'm normally asleep by now. I told my uber bud about this film. She said it would be like the bits in The Queen's Gambit on Netflix where the chessboard appears on the ceiling and the main character zooms the pieces around. I don't have the budget, I'm afraid. So this is Diamond Fun, awesomely illustrated in blue digital ink. You pick a doubler diamond or single diamond in the centre and then add another layer until you run out of ceiling or try and repeat patterns throughout, holding the space in your head. And when you overlap, it's a gah or ouch moment and you lose. Do you know why I'm really lying here? It's not for shits and giggles. And please stop now and just enjoy the ceiling bits because I'm about to rant about scary things to do with disabled people and it may just be too much because we're living it and you probably don't need this right now. Please feel free to stick your fingers in your ears and hum and stop reading the captions until you've counted to 40 and then I'll meet you back here. Love you, bye. I'm staring at the ceiling because disabled people, disabled women, learning disabled people, they're dying. They are disproportionately dead. They are being culled. We are being given do not resuscitate orders. We are being murdered by a government who says, welcome to worthy, welcome to herd immunity and eugenics and vulnerability. I have value. My disabled friends and comrades have value. All disabled people have value. So I'll be raging and staring at the ceiling and loving you all as best as I can until it is safe to love you in person. Welcome back, if you were humming. <laughs> I was going to end on a poem about the cobweb. It wasn't much of a web. It just became a knotted dangle which had a cool shadow, but after ten years, my husband finally took it down. I miss that cobweb slash dangle. I miss you. Be safe. Be bold. Be kind. Be you. You are wonderful.